So we, yay, we've managed to make it to all the way to the hyena den and everything seems to be a very, very happy, what day is it today? Saturday, Saturday morning. And there she is, <laughs> just enjoying some peace and quiet. Now, I'm not, uh, I haven't been able to get to know many of the hyenas of Juma. So if you guys have an ID for this particular female and if she's one of the dominant ones, uh, please do use the hashtag Safari Live and just let us know which one she is. And then maybe we can take a guess at, you know, the possibility or the possible age of the cubs that are in there that we are hoping to see. If there's anything that's still quite dark, like little hyena cubs are, I'll be super happy to see. I think maybe they w they were, because we came and checked a few times. Taylor came and checked in the morning, I came and checked twice in the afternoon. So I think yesterday, because of all the lions that were moving around and roaring and not too far from this area, I think they just decided that it was probably safer not to come out and just keep the little ones inside. Because lions uh, will kill hyena cubs or, you know, just fight hyenas in general because they all compete for the same type of food from the same for the same area. So they don't really have a very good relationship. That's why a lot of people call them the eternal enemies or, you know, a very dramatic <laughs> title along those lines. So I think maybe this one has just now decided to return and she's been pretty much sleeping the whole morning just around here and every now and again it's just apparently she's raised her head and that's about it so I think maybe she's had quite a quite a night of foraging around looking for food and then she's finally returned to the safety of this very pretty den so peaceful isn't it Thank you girls for sending your comments. So apparently we've got Ribbon that we're looking at. Nice to meet you Ribbon, I've heard lots about you. <laughs> I think the part that they didn't tell me was that you were able to sleep so peacefully. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, when you want to wake up Saturday morning but it's way too hard and you just turn around and you toss and turn and you open one eye and it's like maybe I'll get up but then it's just like, oh no, there's nothing really keeping me awake. BB, you'd like to know if Ribbon still has both cubs. Um, I'm not too sure. I hope she does. We're just going to patiently sit here and wait and hopefully as it starts getting warmer, maybe she'll call them out and then we'll be able to, to answer that together. <laughs> not too sure yet. They've been a bit shy lately apparently or in the last few days, let's put it that way. So I'm hoping that at one point she's going to just bring them all out and we'll be able to see who's around and who's not around. But you see the sun, I'm sure if we wait enough, the sun that's just starting on the eastern side of the termite mound is eventually going to start hitting her or it's going to start warming her up, which could potentially cause her to move and maybe the little ones will come around. So I think we can patiently sit around here, just spend some time with some lovely hyenas. We were very lucky yesterday to spend a lot of time with many different lions, so I think any African predator is worth spending time with. never ceases to amaze me how they manage to use these termite mounds and they're just so completely hidden away. You would never know that they're here. And also just if you see from this distance, we know where to look for the shape of her neck and her ears and everything else. But if you were to just drive past quickly, you would never see it. Imagine, for example, if you had to do a self-drive in Kruger National Park where you just have to stick to the tar road and you go to you know, an average speed of maybe 40, 50 kilometers an hour, depending on the type of road that you're in. Very, imagine how easy it would be to just boop, drive past and never see them. <laughs> 